the Confederate right flank beyond a field owned by John Ray. That morning, while his family huddled in the cellar, he sat on his porch in a rocking chair. Battle raged throughout his cornfield. Captain Joseph Plummer's 300 U.S. regulars and a battalion of Missouri Home Guards anchoring the Union left flank had crossed Wilson's Creek to take the Pulaski artillery. Around 7 a.m., they were met in Ray's cornfield by the neatly uniformed and well-armed 3rd Louisiana Pelicans, accompanied by our troops under Colonel James McIntosh. 900 Confederates in all. Plummer was outnumbered nearly three to men advanced. Rebels camped on the edge of the corn grew nervous. A pelican described it. Who are you? What force is that? cried our colonel. United States troops was the reply. This was said in a tone so authoritative that I confess it for a moment almost staggered me. They fled from the fire into the battle line being formed by Colonel McIntosh's Arkansas troops and the Pelicans under Colonel Louis Hebert. The Federal regulars spread out behind the cover of a rail fence at the edge of the cornfield. The rebels formed a battle line amidst ravines and underbrush. As the sides began to exchange volleys, the firing lines closed to within 30 yards. Captain Plummer faced an old schoolmate across the field. He and Confederate Colonel McIntosh had known each other years ago at West Point. Today, they forgot their alma mater. Battle raged in the cornfield for half an hour. For the first time, the Confederates got a good look at the Federals standing amidst Farmer Ray's corn. A sergeant with a third Louisiana described it. When the smoke cleared away a little, we could see the enemy plainly. They stood as firm as ever, but their ranks were thinned and the dead lay thick. Some of them had been slightly wounded in the edge but they still stood in their places, 
while the blood running down their faces gave them a ghastly but fierce and determined look. Beyond Plummer's men, a Federal Lieutenant John Dubois had arrived with three six-pound cannon. Supported by the 1st Iowa and a battalion of U.S. regulars, Dubois positioned his guns in the cover of some trees. From this high vantage point, his guns began to pound the Pulaski artillery. Meanwhile, the fighting in Ray's cornfield had resumed. Plummer's regulars were taking heavy casualties, but still managed to rake the rebel line with musket fire. Colonel McIntosh began to rally his troops. He rode along the rebel line shouting, Get up, Louisianans, and charge them! Do you all wish to be killed? The Confederates responded. Their massive attack forced Plummer's men to abandon the cornfield. The rebels swarmed through the corn. Fuck. 